are Mount Rushmore. It's always a fun, half controversial, well, really depends who you put in it, but it always creates discussion, debate, and if you guys know me, I love the discussion, debate, engagement, all that good stuff in the comment section. So this, I, I'm 100% certain it's going to create some debate. Before I get into who's on my pro wrestling Mount Rushmore's, because I have two of them, okay? Before I get into who's on them, right, right away, I want to lay some challenges out, okay? I want to see a, a Mount Rushmore for pro wrestling from Wrestling Mixtape, the Sports and Wrestling Rundown, Wrestling with Heat, although I think he might have already done one, Y2J Fanboy and King Morrow, or Gaming and Wrestling with King Morrow, whatever the channel name is, sorry, but yeah, Morrow. So I want to see Pro Wrestling Mount Rushmore from you guys. I want to lay that challenge out, starting a little trend to get this going over the next few days. The Pro Wrestling Mount Rushmore, because I feel like it's something that is worth everyone having a go at, because they're subjective. Now, there are some guys who I feel like just have to be on it. But at the same time, I feel like there's about eight guys who kind of have to be on a pro wrestling Mount Rushmore, so it creates some discussion and debate. Now, without further ado, I'll get into this. So, first and foremost, the first guy I'm putting on the pro wrestling Mount Rushmore, Hulk Hogan, okay? Terry Belayer, the things he's done for the wrestling business, when he came in in the, like, the early 80s, and the things he did, you know, infamously winning the WWF Championship from the Iron Sheik at MSG, catapulting the World Wrestling Federation above the rest of the other territories. Okay, Vince McMahon, Hulk Hogan, that was like the one-two punch that led, no, like it assailed the WWF above the rest of the territories. Okay, that, with Hulk Hogan, carried the World Wrestling Federation. That put the WWF on the map. It was a huge part of the WWF, Hulk Hogan. And it wasn't just that. Hogan's career had crazy longevity. Literally, this guy, main events, what, WrestleMania 1... Two, obviously three. Did he know he didn't? Wasn't in the main event four. You had him the main event five, six, seven. Was he not even eight? I think he was in the eight as well. I don't know. Nine. He main evented that one. Unfortunately, like the first like eight and nine WrestleManias, he was a big part of all of it. Hogan then went to WCW and literally was the sole reason why WCW took over the WWF in the ratings war and just. The WCW were on top 83 straight weeks, mainly because of Hogan, the NWO, and the fresh, edgy product led by Hogan. So, Hogan has done a madness in the wrestling business. He's 100% on the pro wrestling Mount Rushmore. If you don't have Hogan on your Mount Ru pro wrestling Mount Rushmore, don't talk to me, okay? So, that's the first one, Hulk Hogan. Secondly, my next guy, I've got Ric Flair. Now, Ric Flair is someone who... Like, like there was Hogan in WWF, and then there was Ric Flair in WCW slash the NWA. Alright, Ric Flair really broke onto the scene in 1983. He had the cage match with Harley Race, I believe, from memory. He had the match with Harley Race about 1983. Harley was the, like, the face of the NWA for, like, a few years in the late 70s, early 80s. Ric Flair beats Harley Race, and Ric Flair's stardom shoots up, okay? Ric Flair, he's not some six foot nine powerhouse beast, but he's a guy who can put on that great wrestling match, telling an incredible story in the ring. Has the matches with Ricky Steamboat in 1989. Has the matches with Dusty Rhodes. Has the matches with Sting. All these infamous matches in WCW slash NWA, which were just simply phenomenal. Ric Flair, the Four Horsemen, he did so much with that. Just Ric Flair's legacy in pro wrestling, it's just one of the main things all the guys on this list, especially three of them, obviously Ric Flair's one of these guys, just the longevity of excellence. So obviously, Flair in the 80s was a crucial part of the NWA. Then in the 90s, WCW, Ric Flair was in that company the whole of the 1990s, except for 1992 and 1993 when Ric Flair was in the World Wrestling Federation where he infamously won the Royal Rumble match, the best Rumble match ever. Ric Flair won it, cut the promo after the match, which the picture of his face afterwards is hilarious. But yeah, Flair was in the WWF for like a tiny bit, back to WCW, leading that WCW ship over the WWE, or WWF until Eric Bischoff and the management and Kevin Nash and all them ran that company into the ground. So Ric Flair is the second man on my pro wrestling all-time greats, Mount Rushmore, which if you haven't gathered, this is my main Mount Rushmore. I've got a second Mount Rushmore coming later in the video, but this is the main one. So Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, next up, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Now, Austin is a guy who, if it wasn't for him, the company wouldn't be around nowadays. The, the WWE as we know it today, lives off the back of the Attitude Era. 
because honestly, as we as you know, if you know wrestling history, Vince McMahon and the WWF were in dire straits come 1996, 1997. All right, they they brought Stone Cold Steve Austin in as the ringmaster with Ted DiBiase cutting cringe promos about how great he is in the ring. So you take a, a Steve Austin who was cutting edgy, risque promos in ECW with Paul Heyman, which were getting attention in the like, kind of indie wrestling fraternity, bring him to the WWF and put him as the ringmaster. And then Austin eventually does the Austin 316 promo, King of the Ring. He breaks out above the rest. Stone Cold Steve Austin, he becomes Stone Cold. Austin 316, uh, all his catchphrases, everything to do with his character, his attitude. He's a heel. He's just he's a guy who you know, he, you know gets heel heat. Then the infamous match, WrestleMania 13 versus Bret Hart. That match was just something else. Just the double turn, just a perfect match, that one. A phenomenal match. Austin becomes an anti-hero babyface. And then the Attitude Era really you know, takes off late 97, 1998. Obviously, Austin and Tyson, Austin McMahon. You guys know the drill. Just Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Rock, Austin Triple H, all this stuff in 98, 99. And it, it was only a short little period for, St- for Steve Austin for the neck injury. It was, what, 96 through 99 for he had the surgery. But what he did in saving pro wrestling and bringing it into prominence in the mainstream was just unparalleled. Then, obviously, Austin, he came back end of 2000. It was all right. He won the Rumble in 01. You know, WrestleMania 17 turned heel on the best WrestleMania ever. That was the big story. And then afterwards, he led the invasion and whatnot. After WrestleMania 17, Austin's heel run just didn't go well. But Stone Cold Steve Austin, he's the third guy on my all-time greats, Mount Rushmore. And fourth, this one, well, the guy I have on it is irrefutable. And if you're going to try and say this guy shouldn't be on it, you're a Creedon. But really... It's just, it's a pro wrestling Mount Rushmore. You could say, I'll do honorable mentions. So, honorable mentions, you could do Shawn Michaels. He was like the fifth guy I had. Shawn Michaels could easily be on this all time greats Mount Rushmore. I had Bruno San Martino because he held the WWF or WWF championship and then the WWF championship for a collective, what, like 11 years worth. He held that thing so long. He was the face of Vince McMahon Sr.'s company. Bruno San Martino should be there, but. I know, it depends based on opinion. Well, additionally, John Cena, for everything he's done over the past 15 years, I think he's another big honorable mention that is worthy of uh, getting credit. Also, The Rock, he, he's another one, made a star in the WWE and in the Attitude Era. Him and Austin were the two faces, so you could put The Rock in here. And lastly, Andre the Giant, because he's Andre. He's the eighth one of the world. So Andre the Giant is another honorable mention. But really, my fourth guy it should be kind of obvious by this point. The fourth man on my all-time greats, Mount Rushmore, The Undertaker. This guy, if you're watching the Last Ride documentary series at the moment, you're seeing into why. Now, I forget, was it episode one or two? I think it was one. They really talked about how The Undertaker, in the locker room, for so, so, so many years, has just been, like, the guy everyone goes to. He's been the locker room leader for over two decades. He's been... Just Vince's like number one guy as far as always being there, always constant. Mark Calloway will always show up. All right, this guy debuted in 1990s Survivor Series, coming out with Bruce and Brother Love. So Undertaker came out. It was a gimmick which people hadn't seen before. Like this was something so unique in a time when everyone was screaming and all up and about. Jovial, the Ultimate Warrior, Randy Savage, those guys. You had this Undertaker character who was absurdly creepy. He stood out above everyone else. And his matches were slow. They were methodical. He was different. And his longevity just put him above all the rest because Undertaker at his peak was never as great as, like, to the level of Hogan, Flair, Austin. But the Undertaker's longevity at such a high level, his longevity at that tier right, right below Hogan and Austin it was just unparalleled. The whole 1990s, The Undertaker, he was just there. Undertaker was always reliable. He was always a guy who would be there for Vince. Additionally, Undertaker, you get to you know into the Attitude Era. You've got this like Ministry Undertaker, the Ministry of Darkness, the corporate ministry. I love that. I love the ministry. It's just it's that's just amazing TV. You had the biker Undertaker, Big Evil. Just all that stuff was good. Then he came back after being buried alive at Survivor Series 2003 by Kane. Came back as, um, you know, the the 
traditional dead man on Taker, WrestleMania 20. Then he was on SmackDown for a few years. He was a SmackDown guy. And then he had his matches at WrestleMania, the WrestleMania main event classics, the Shawn Michaels matches, the Triple H matches, the CM Punk match. The streak got broken. And as you're saying in the last ride nowadays, it's just a matter of when will he retire. So that's The Undertaker. That's my pro wrestling all-time greats, Mount Rushmore. Um, Undertaker, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Ric Flair, and Hulk Hogan. Personally, I think that's a pretty hard, like, Mount Rushmore to argue with. I think that one is n- not irrefutable, because once again, as I said, you, c- you can argue Andre, you can argue Bruno, you can argue Shawn Michaels, John Cena, The Rock, you can argue those guys, hell, even a Bret Hart and Triple H, you can argue them, Randy Savage, but at the same time, I feel like these guys are just on a, a whole separate level, so that's my all-time greats, Mount Rushmore. Next up, I'm just going to fly through a, a Mount Rushmore of reinvention. Because this is something which I feel like I wanted to do, and it's a bit different to this one. So, my Mount Rushmore of reinvention, and guys who have reinvented themselves, it goes as follows. Number one in this Mount Rushmore, Chris Jericho. This guy, what, when did he start wrestling? Like, he's wrestled all over, he's wrestled everywhere, he's done everything, Chris Jericho. Seriously, he came in early 90s, wrestling Japan, wrestling Independence, wrestling, I believe Jericho was in ACW for a certain point, he was in WCW as a cruiserweight, having great cruiserweight matches with all the cruiserweight guys there, then he came, WWF 1999, the countdown to the new millennium, he, he came out, had the promo off with The Rock, Jericho, he was just, he was always there, he was a constant, he was a guy who held the IC title nine times, which in other words was Vince McMahon giving him something respectable, because at the time the IC title meant something, giving him a respectable accolade that wasn't the main event. Like, Jericho was just a constant performer. He always reinvented himself. Be that, um, you know, the Jericho who came out and had the promo off with The Rock. Be that the Jericho who came out with The List and It and all those catchphrases in 2016. The Jericho who had the, you know, the feud with Shawn Michaels 2003 or 2008, both of which are phenomenal. The Chris Jericho, now he's seen AEW the pain maker, the leader of the inner circle, the, you know, the first ever AEW world champion, one of the most entertaining acts in AEW since it began, just Chris Jericho has to be on this reinvention Mount Rushmore. Next up on my reinvention Mount Rushmore, Shawn Michaels, a guy who, oh, what hasn't Shawn done? I, Shawn Michaels, he came in as the Rockers, as a tag team act, then after a few years, the Rockers, he became a mid-card guy, won the IC title, was in IC title programs, had the incredible ladder match with Razor Ramon at WrestleMania 10. Then he gradually moved his way through the new generation era into the w- WWF title picture. Won it from Bret Hart at WrestleMania, you know, WrestleMania 12. Michaels, he's you know the heartbreak kid, the sexy boy. So he has all that stuff. Then you know, obviously there's the DX stuff with Triple L, Hunter Hearst Helmsley in China. 97, going into 98, drops the title, goes off for his back surgery, changes... You know, finds God, you know, turns away from being a guy who everyone hates to a guy who, you know, finds respect and everything. And yeah, he comes back to us and two, has all these great matches. The Jericho thing I just mentioned, just Sean's had an incredible career. Just those constant, you know, Mr. WrestleMania matches where he just had the best match at every WrestleMania for like five years. The stuff with Kurt Angle, the stuff with Vince even. That wasn't that horrible. Actually, never mind, it was. Vince and God and Shane and all that stuff was terrible, but. Yeah, he had a DX run again, and another DX run, and he had the stuff of The Undertaker. Just Shawn Michaels has to be on this one. So, yeah, for reinvention, Chris Jericho, Shawn Michaels, and my final two, The Undertaker, which I mentioned before, his career, and then Hulk Hogan. So, that's my reinvention, Mount Rushmore, and that's been my pro wrestling Mount Rushmore video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you have, be sure like, comment, sub. You guys know the drill. Once again, those guys who I challenged, make your pro wrestling Mount Rushmore if you haven't already. So, yeah, that being said, like, comment, sub. You guys know the drill. See ya.